believe in doing it. Before I get into the word, however, I do want to open up with prayer, and then we're going to go right into the word of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just say thank you for this opportunity. And Lord, now as we present what you, what we have shared privately in public, I pray, Father, that someone may walk out these doors empowered and knowing more about who you are. Because, Lord, we need you on every side. And, Father, even as we find ourselves here in the season of Lent, Father, someone even now is made in a sacrifice and fasting before you, Father. We pray now in Jesus' name that you would meet their need as they continue to go through this Lent season. Lord, we love you, we adore you, and we give your name the glory, the honor, and the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Elder McMillan was here earlier. I don't know if he cut out or not on me, but we want to acknowledge Elder McMillan in his presence here on today. If you would, let us stand to our feet at this time as we go into God's holy word on today. It will be coming from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Matthew chapter 4, starting with verses 1 through 11. And I'm reading out of the Holloman Christian Standard Bible, so it may read just slightly different than what you have there. But it simply says this, verse 1 says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit in the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. Then the tempter approached him and said, If you are the Son of God, tell those stones to become bread. And he answered, it is written, man must not live on bread alone, but by every word that come from the mouth of God. Verse 5 says, and then the devil took him to the holy city, had him stand on the pentacle of the temple, and said to him, if you are the son of God, throw yourself down. It is written, he will give his angels orders concerning you. And they will support you with their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus says in verse 7, he says, it is also written, do not test the Lord your God. Verse 8 says, and again, the devil took him to a high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world with their splendor. And he said to him, I will give you all these things if you fall down and worship me. Jesus says, go away, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and immediately the angels came and began to serve him. And so, beloved, on this morning, we want to talk just briefly about learning how to face the enemy. Learning how to face the enemy. One of the things that I've learned, Minister Mildred, as I was preparing for this particular sermon on today is in order to appreciate chapter 4, you have to go back to chapter 3. And in chapter 3, starting with verse 17, it simply says here that Jesus finds himself being baptized by John the Baptist. Verse 17 simply says here that God the Father bore witness to his son's baptism. The second point that's very interesting about this here too is that the Holy Spirit certifies Christ as being the Messiah. It's very important that those two things go together because when you put those two things together, Ms. Armstrong, you can now introduce yourself into chapter 4. So we find out here that Jesus is now being baptized, but one of the things that I want us to get out of this particular text here is this. One thing that we've got to always understand here is that all believers will come to a place, even after you're saved, that temptation will come around the corner. Temptation will come because just as Christ had to endure it, so will we. And so it's very pivotal because as we go on our Christian journey, one of the things that we want to face many obstacles, but one of the things that we've got to make sure we're understanding, not only are we going to face obstacles, 
but we got to learn how to handle them. Now, Mother Johnson, one of the things about going through stuff is knowing how to handle what you're going through. A lot of times, like, we get so wrapped up in so just, oh, you know, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? But here in this particular text, the enemy tells us exactly what his game plan is. Because he tells us in John 10 and 10, he says that I come to kill, to steal, and destroy. Jesus is at a particular place now where he's in the wilderness and he is now 40 days in having to deal with the devil. And so what's equally important here is that I like this particular part because in Matthew chapter 4 verse 1 it says that the spirit led Christ into the wilderness. Now you can't sleep on that because one of the things that's very, very important with that here is that the Spirit of God led Christ into the wilderness. And so, beloved, one of the things that you've got to make sure you get in your spirit on today is that whatever the Holy Spirit leads you to, he know that you can get the glory out of it. And so the Spirit of God leads them. And so we find here that whenever the Spirit of the Lord leads you into the wilderness, the wilderness has a purpose. The wilderness has a purpose. And it's very interesting for all of us to make sure that we are aware of is that whenever you find yourself in the wilderness, make sure you're learning what you need to know. A lot of times we'll end up finding out our true character only because we've had to go in the wilderness. And so when you go through the wilderness, you got to make sure that you got to look at two things. One of the things here is that you have to make sure that is it a test or was it a bad choice I made? Now, if you were in Sunday school, you, you caught that because we talked about that this Sunday in Sunday school. You got to be leery about the choices that you make because a lot of times we're putting everything on the devil. And it ain't all the devil sometimes. Some of it's our own decision making we made. As why the devil is even in the stuff. And so when we look at this text, one of the three things I want us to get out of this, and I only have three things, and I'm going to sit down. But, the third, but one of the first things I want you to begin to understand here, the first point that I have here is going to come from verse 3 and what we read earlier. Verse 3 simply says here that the tempter came and said, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. Reverend Orr, one of the things that you have got to do when you are in the wilderness is you have got to know the word of God. You have to know the word of God. Beloved of God, in 2019, we have made the tempter's job so simple because we don't know the word. And so while we're in the wilderness, what we end up doing a lot of times is that we end up blaming other people for why we end stuff. Oh, you know, I'm because I, you know. no, the devil is beating you up because you don't know the word. And when you don't know the word, what ultimately ends up happening is, is that you end up confusing yourself because you keep saying, why am I in this? Why am I in this? And truth be told, Christ has already said, listen, I have already given you the roadmap. I've given you the example. All you got to do is follow the game plan. But we mess ourselves up from time to time because we simply don't know the word. And as I began to keep digging in and digging and digging in this, I looked at John 8, 3, 7, and it simply says here that Christ says that my word has no place in you. This is the reason why, Brother Chris, we suffer a lot of times is because the word of God is not inside of us. So oftentimes what we end up doing is that when we find ourselves in particular situations, we can't get ourselves out of them because there's nothing to get out. It's just like trying to go to the bank and write a check and cash it, and it ain't no good. You have to put something in the bank if you're going to get something out of the bank. 
uh, you know, and this is why we keep wrestling and wrestling and doing stuff and doing stuff because we want to blame the devil, but are we really hearing God at this particular time? Because truth be told, somebody right now is in the wilderness right now. And they're scratching their head and they're wondering, how am I going to overcome? How am I going to get out of this stuff? Well, simply this, Deke, as I said before, one of the things that we've got to do is we've got to know the word of God. Do you know that when I'm sick, by his stripes, I am healed? Do you know that? When I'm at war with myself, he told me that I already have peace within me. Do you know that? Do you know when he simply says that when I'm in temptation, that there is no temptation have overtaken you that is common to man? Do you know the word? Because believe it or not, beloved, this is why we suffer, because we do not know. Secondly, what's the most important thing about being in the wilderness that we got to get out of here is simply this, is that we have got to stop being tried. Verse 5 and 6 tells us that because simply this, the devil tells Jesus, throw yourself down and the angels will catch you. Don't fall for the okie doke. Don't fall for the okie doke. Because a lot of times the devil will just tell you stuff and you'll say, well, really? And then we end up doing it. Beloved, do not fall into a season of where you keep getting tried with the same games, the same gimmicks, the same things that he's doing you. He's telling you right now, you can overcome whatever God has for you. In these next 40 days that you're in, the devil will always try to attack you at your weakest point. This particular chapter really talks more about fasting. And when you enter into the area of fast, you disconnect yourself from food to God. And so if I'm going to fast during this time of Lent and I'm giving it to God, then I am going to find myself at my weakest point. And just like the devil, I know Rev Moore ain't ate nothing. Let me come mess with her a little bit. But while you're in the wilderness, make sure that you stay connected to God. Make sure that you're staying away from foolishness, from messiness, from being thirsty, from hearing lies. Because when you begin to get out of those things, then you stay out of confusion then the windows of heaven will open up and begin to minister to you and tell you exactly what you need to do while you're going through. But all too often, we just want to just, you know, oh, I don't know what to do. I, don't, I, I, I play the same game. The devil came to me the other day and gave me the same trick, and yet we still fall for the same tricks. Beloved on today, don't fall for the same tricks. If Ray Ray was bad last week, Ray Ray probably is going to be bad this week. And so we got to make sure that we have a mindset to know and begin to understand what the tricks of the enemy really are. During this time when you're going through the wilderness, Christ is simply telling you this, you can do it. I'm looking for all my believers to walk through this experience knowing more of who I am. He's depending on you uh, because uh, one of the things Ms. Evans is he's doing here is he's simply saying this, uh, Joyce, I, I know that it's tough. I know you're going through some stuff, but I'm telling you now, you can do it. You can overcome this wilderness experience, but you have to have the faith to do it. Third thing that you want to begin to understand here and, and which is found in verse 10 is simply this. He says in verse 10, which is very powerful, he says, Go away, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Third point I want you to understand and get out of this is simply this. Learn how to worship God in the wilderness. 
It's nothing like being stuck and all you see is you being stuck. All you see is I'm stuck. When it's a great opportunity, uh, Deacon Kitchen, to get to a place where you can worship God and say, Lord, you know what? I need to worship you. I need to get to a place where I need to hear from you during this season of Lent. Because again, I already know I'm going to be attacked. I already know the enemy's going to come at me with all these kind of lies and stuff. But I also got to make sure that you are worthy to be praised. All too often, we forget about God's worth when we're in the middle of the wilderness. We love to worship in church. And that's fine. But what about when you in the wilderness? When it's just you and the tempter. And he's sitting back looking at you saying, what you going to do? Jesus got you out here in this wilderness. What you going to do? And a lot of times we'll just say, well, you know, I'm going to make it. I'll be okay. And Jesus is saying, no, 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 no. Remember my word. What did I tell you to do when you get in tight situations? And if you are not familiar with the word of God, again, he will beat you up with it. Do you see God's worth when you begin to think about the goodness of Jesus and all of the stuff he's done for you? You ought to immediately ought to say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Your spirit brought me to this place. And because you brought me to this place, I have to worship you because you already told me that I can overcome it. But only you and you alone know exactly what you can do if you got enough in the tank to get you out of it. That's what's important. And so one of the things here that we got to begin to do and understand here is this, and I'm going to sit down because I'm actually done almost. But one of the things here that we have to understand here is, is this is that Jesus overcame temptation of this world by using the word of God. While you're in the wilderness, make sure you are speaking God's promises in your life daily. Get to a place where you hear positive affirmations all the time. We don't want to hear negative affirmations because negative only keep you in the wilderness. The wilderness was only designed to hold you for 40 days. But if you're not careful, you will sit there longer. Hear positive affirmations. Get to a place, uh, Mother Burns, where you're living a consecrated life. We don't talk about that word too much now in 2019, the word consecrated. Consecrated is nothing more than being set apart. You don't want to be caught up in the world system. The world system is designed to keep you bound. And if you keep on doing the things of the world, you will continue to get the same results, getting the same trickery, getting the same games, and getting the same results. Beloved Christ is saying, I am tired of y'all suffering when you don't have to. We suffer because we don't know. But one of the things that I found very interesting, Brother James, in this whole lesson here is simply this, is that when I decide to follow Christ, the results can be amazing. Because I know that when God does the work, I can get out of things. When I listen to God, I know that I'm in the best place at the best time at the right time. And then the word simply tells us this, is that Whenever the 40 days ended, the Bible says that the angels came and they ministered to Christ. Beloved, when you make it to the finish line, angels will be here ministering to you. Because they are now saying, glory be to God. Even in the midst of you going through what you went through, all of the stuff the devil took you through, you made it. You made it. It looked rough, it looked tough, and all that stuff, but you made it. And that's worth giving God praise for. 
that's worth giving God praise for. So as I close, because I told you I was done, it wasn't going to be long. It's simply this. During this season of Lent, please, ma'am, please, sir, know that the enemy's job is to keep you in the wilderness. Don't allow him to keep you in the wilderness. The wilderness wasn't designed to be a permanent solution, but the wilderness was designed to be a temporary solution. And while you're in this temporary place, get the glory out of God and let him show you some stuff. Mother Johnson, I'll, I'll go ahead and admit to you transparently here before you even now. When I find myself in the wilderness, I learned a lot more about myself. You'll find out more about yourself simply when you go through the wilderness. Because people who you thought were going to be there for you, when you thought the job was going to be there for you, you'll find those things out whenever you're going through the wilderness. And so I'm done. I give God praise this morning for him allowing me to share just this brief word with you and to let you know that during the season of Lent, we have a lot to be thankful for, but we also got a lot to learn too. Learn what God is trying to tell you. Listen to what he's trying to tell you because he's already given you the example. Now it's up to you to follow the example. As our deacons come before us at this time,